The Enquirer's Journal. Hugo speaking. Hey, boss, it's me. Gail? I thought you left for the holidays. I can't stop thinking about it, boss. The letter? I can't get it out of my head. Something about this one just feels different. Different? What are you talking about? Is this about the hotel story again? I just think it could be worth checking out is all. I keep thinking- Didn't I tell you to not waste time with this kind of crap? These people are lonely, Gail. They have nothing better to do. They just want some form of recognition. Even this Ben guy? He doesn't exist. Believe me, this is all hogwash. I've seen it before. I'm just saying, this one feels different. It just doesn't make sense. Lying about something like this, and the letter itself, something about it really stuck with me. What are you really asking me here? I think I'm asking you to trust me. Listen, I'll even bring my own camera. Do you have a title? I'll figure it out. <clears throat> Benjamin's Sin. The Enquirer's Journal, dated January 9th, 1979, by Gail Smith. My arrival seems to be expected. A single room key with a note attached. Someone here has been waiting for me. The hotel's glory days might be long past, but the walls are strangely comforting. I might have hoped Benjamin would meet me here, but no such luck. Turns out the door to the mystery was right here with me all along. Benjamin wanted me to see something. 
where to get drugs, and I feel it's easier to find to get acid or speed or something than it is to buy bubble gum at a store because you have to wait in line. This guy worked a normal job, had a normal life, and when that life grew gray and boring, this is where he would come to be completely alone. Turns out he wasn't. The kitchen staff going about their day, fulfilling their mundane tasks. Little did they know that someone was keeping an eye on them, waiting for a misstep. Strange place to make a lair, dusty and cramped. I wonder if he watched me from his bed when I arrived. He hid in the shadows of his room to drink and sleep his days away. The stench of liquor carries through the vent and becomes an opening for the world to know his terrible secret. by McCord. Zadomanski goes over to the opposite wing. Here's Zadomanski moving into the Toronto zone, but he was checked right there. And Boutet picks up the loose puck. Like putting on a mask, Benjamin slipped into the very walls of the hotel. It's like no one ever saw him again, but he was always there. And your local station. Better. You don't really get the point where you can't drive a car or anything. Not a 
doctor said he'd recommend like a glass of wine or a small drink when you come home to relax you, but marijuana does a little more than just relax you. One joint wouldn't wouldn't do all that much and that's <laughs> pretty powerful, but I think if you're just going to relax a little bit, that's why a lot of people smoke. Just to relax themselves a little bit. I you know, I don't say that if you're disgusted, go home and get stoned, you know. That that's not the idea. But I think some people are very social. Benjamin made a whole world inside these walls, and he made sure nobody knew, even though they were all part of it. They had no idea the purpose he found in lying in wait, looking in on all their sad little lives. And what did I feel? I saw the openings, and gladly I looked. This is a story about remorse. This is a story about obsession. Benjamin couldn't live with the weight of his sin. He had seen too much and had nobody to tell it to. I saw what he saw, and it still wasn't enough to shift the blame. But the worst part of it all? I think I understand. <laughs> 